Right, we're here at the Syrian, which is probably one of the most magnificent uh, structures in the whole of Egypt. Uh, not simply because of the great size of the megalithic blocks that have been used to construct it, which uh, are made of quartzite around the outside and on the inside we have massive pieces of granite, of Aswan granite, but also the fact that it's in a style which is unique to the Valley Temple of Khafre, the Sphinx Temple, um, and a few other Old Kingdom structures uh, which date to around 2600 BC. Uh, and we can see actually on these blocks on the far wall, we can, see, we can see on these blocks on the far wall that there are twin knobs on the outside of the blocks facing in towards the temple, which remind me immediately of the similar knobs that are on the facing blocks um, of the Third Pyramid, which obviously dates to just younger than about 2500 BC. Um, and what I've noticed here, just to the left, is that there is a, uh, a doorway with a huge carved megalithic lintel on the top of it. Um, and I look at that and I could be in Peru. I could be looking at uh, a similar doorway at Olintitambo or Machu Picchu um, or any of the other you know, huge megalithic sites that we find there. Plus we have here keystone cuts on the top of the lintels uh, which show that, the, that they were bound together using these bow tie like, um, you know, uh, uh, probably metallic, uh, that's the idea. Uh, they could be made of stone, we don't know. But they were to bind together and to keep in place blocks. And of course you find very similar uh, style uh, keystone cuts in Peru um, and obviously in, in, um, in Bolivia, a place like Tiwanaku, I believe. Uh, there's a good example right down there in front of us now. Uh, and these would have bound together the blocks to ensure that they never moved, although quite clearly they don't look like they're going to be moving anytime soon. But perhaps it was to preempt uh, a, an earthquake or something like that. This place was clearly a, 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 you know, a, a site of reverence uh, and possibly somewhere where people would come for healing purposes at a much later date. I mean, the water rises up from the water table to create this island in the middle, which perhaps is why it's given the name the, the Assyrian. However, we have much later um, evidence of activity here in these flower of life symbols, which you can see on the inside of these uprights over there. I mean, you can see too clearly there are others uh, to the side. Um, and they're probably done during the Greek uh, occupation of Egypt during the Ptolemaic times. Uh, but the, obviously the flower of life is a very important symbol. Uh, what it's doing here, not sure, but uh, it's fascinating. You can also see within some of the, the uprights here where there's cuts, vertical cuts, where quite clearly either parts of them have either been tried to be broken off at a later point or whether this is actually quarry marks that were, that were done at the time of construction itself. And well, that will give us a small amount of indication of the techniques that they were using to make these blocks. I can see more of them on the top of of this upright right in front of us here. Um, beyond that, what was this place used for? Well, conventionally, it was said to have been constructed by Seti the uh, first as part of his uh, temple complex here at Abydos. But of course, there is every suggestion that it might be much older and probably goes back to uh, Old Kingdom times, maybe even the fourth dynasty, the same sort of age as the, uh, the Giza pyramids. Uh, and there's another school of thought that wants to take it back to nine to 10,000 BC. Uh, 
obviously, I don't know, but I'm inclined to think that it probably does date to the Old Kingdom period, that there's a mirror um, between those two. Do you see that they're, they're both in two parts? This yeah. one is in two parts. But I mean, all the rest of them are single blocks, okay? But the one over here that I'm pointing out at the moment, which has got like a little sort of like square hole indentation in it, that's sitting on a separate block, which is unusual for the, the rest of them. In other words, you can't see that. And it's got one of those striations through it. Um, you can also see these striations on the huge lintel to my right here. Now, again, I, I just find it interesting that we should see those in the Valley Temple of Caffrey, and they're also here as well. Because, you know, to me, these are purposeful. They've, they've picked those stones so that they can have those striations showing. They're quartz veins, that's it. That's the word, quartz veins. So, I mean, but look at these doorways. I mean, these doorways, as I say, are so similar both to the Valley Temple and Peru. They are very, very similar. But just looking over here, I can see a large block that actually has multiple sides right down there, below the lintel on the right-hand side. Again, something that we see at uh, places like the Valley Temple of Cafre, uh, Giza, uh, and also in Peru. I mean, you find this so much and so easily. I mean, you could definitely take the walls of this place, put them in Peru, and nobody would know the difference at all. Um, you know, that, it's that close. But whether there was any kind of interaction between these cultures of the past, or whether this is a case of independent development, who knows? Uh, just maybe there was some kind of, uh, you know, transatlantic contact, uh, exchange of ideas uh, to do with construction and the meaning and purpose, the functionality uh, of megalithic sites like this. Uh, but if that's the case, it would have to have been during the third millennium BC. All right, we've just seen the Assyrian. Um, and what's so interesting is that there's actually what they call a, the funeral passage that comes in from the west which means that you move towards the east and you've got all these uh, Book of uh, Gates, Book of Heaven, the Amduat, the so-called books of the underworld that are all written along this funerary passageway. Um, and then you get to a certain point uh, that's actually um, you know, in line with the Assyrian itself and you then come through another almost north-south orientated uh, passageway uh, to actually enter inside the Assyrian itself, which means that you're going from west to east to north, um, which is identical to the orientation of all the main pyramids during the Old Kingdom period. Um, because with those, the, 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 the body starts in the west, moves to the east, um, and then is shot almost like a, out of a gun barrel towards the north and, and the northern stars. Um, and you know you have exactly the same orientation here. Uh, the actual orientation, just to get it on record, uh, using my compass was probably around 14 to 16 degrees east of north. Uh, I don't know whether that has any kind of astronomical uh, value or not. We're going to have to check that one out. But I find this interesting because here you have unquestionably uh, the beliefs and practices that were invoked at the time of the Old Kingdom period um, and that to me is probably more evidence to the fact that this is much older than the time of Seti I but he was aware of what was going on and continued some kind of tradition that already existed perhaps for thousands of years. <laughs> 